Welcome back to the LTM podcast powered by Slipstream Autosports. We're your hosts, Daniel and Alex, and welcome to our Topor race review. Alex, how you going, mate? How was your busy weekend at uh, in Sydney? Okay. Well, you just said busy. <laughs> very busy, very fun. Uh, didn't rain, thank God. Um, well, it did a little bit, but nothing that the drivers couldn't handle. Um and um, yeah, that was good fun. I missed uh, the race, well, one of the top four, but that's okay. Watch the replay, and um, yeah, it looked very, uh, very adventurous out there in the wet, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it was indeed. It was Boy, nuts. Hexy. Um, no one wanted to use ten one. No, God no. Uh, but before we get into the V eight action, just a quick plug on uh, about Alex being in Sydney. We have posted our report for the High Tech Oils Super Series. Uh, that's live on YouTube now if you want to check that out after this. Um, you're more than welcome to do so. Be sure to leave a cheeky like there as well. It's also on Spotify if you want to do that as well. Be sure to give us a five-star rating. So, round three of the 2024 Repco Supercars Championship was held at Torpo. Topor. I don't know what to call it. Um, <laughs> New Zealand. You know, New Zealand round. Um, <laughs> it was a wet half of the weekend. And then Sunday, um, it was completely dry. But, uh, yeah, what a weekend that was. We saw plenty of action. Um, I've got to say, not as exciting as Melbourne in terms of close racing. Yeah, although, who, thought that would have, who thought we would have said that? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was yeah, should have been the other way around. Um, Literally. <laughs> uh, Max Verstappen, the goat here, says um, it was good racing. Uh, lots of overtaking. Red Bull's taking over motorsport. They are indeed. Shady Malou is the best. How you going, mate? Who's your favourite driver um, of all time? I've got to say Craig oh. Lowndes. Uh, currently okay. on the grid. Um, it used to be Todd Hazelwood, but he's not on the grid technically at the moment. So I'm going to have to say either Brock Feeney or Will Brown. Alex, you... That's most of it. As for both categories? That's... Oh, and not all times, um, Lounsey and him. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, apart from them two, at the mm-hmm. moment, it's probably, yeah, Chaz. He's a great bloke. Yeah, he see, there's too many good drivers on the grid. So he, he's definitely on the top list for me. But, yeah, you told me I had to pick one. So there you go. <laughs> and he picks two. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't even, I couldn't even, um, <laughs> couldn't even do, do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Um, so, yeah, overall... Great weekend of racing. Um, like I said, uh, f- Saturday was a bit wet, um, and it did put on a show Sunday. It was a bit more of a calm race. Um, Red Bull were yet again dominant once again after a crap Saturday. Um, they actually had a much it's better a Sunday. Man. Yeah, exactly. Um, so how we normally do our V8 review is we run through the current team standings uh, and, you know, do it as we go along. Now, these are the current standings, which also mean this is the current pit lane order that they'll be going into Perth with. Scotty, how you going, mate? Uh, I thought the racing uh, was okay at Topor, but there is room. Oh, yeah, there is room for improvement for sure. Like The wet race was a lot better, and like I said, Sunday um, definitely was a lot more tamer. Um, but uh, So... Let's get straight into the ones that are leading the championship and the team standings at the moment. Red Bull and Pole Racing. Uh, they've got a whopping 15, 17 points. Well, let me rephrase that. 1,517 points. What? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what? Brock Feeney and Rule Brown finished 21st and 9th and then 2nd and 1st. So like I said, a whole completely different day Sunday. Uh, now, of course, Brock Feeney actually got sp- like he actually spun at turn one uh, on the Saturday race, and uh, he, he, he in saying that he actually struggled um, all weekend except for Sunday. Like he just he he wasn't um, comfortable. Um, he qualified yeah, outside the ten. For everyone, so well, no yeah. one was really comfortable. Um, it's true, true, true. But uh, compared to the other names that he's competing against, we're also in the top ten. Mm, yeah, um, but he definitely, you know, changed the tune Sunday, shootout, um, I believe, and then to get a second place, he was leading a good chunk of the race until his teammate came along. 
Um, and of course, Sunday, yeah. um, Matt Payne, well, who originally got pole on Sunday, um, got beaten by Brock Feeney due to, I think, tyre wear. I just personally think Feeney can, can, can manage his tyres a lot more better than Payne, um, at least for now. So I believe that's what helped him. Plus, Red Bull in general just have good tyre management. Um, yep. And we saw that with Will Brown when he was pushing to get past Brock Feeney um, in that second race to clinch the win, um, which, got to admit, has probably um, created a lot of tension in the garage with the in, uh, with the <laughs> with Jamie Winkup and Martin Dutton. Um, when uh, you know they could have crashed, maybe. And it is early in the yeah, championship been... too. Yeah, but I think Will Brown is. I don't know. He, he's a bit less dirty than kind of Van Gisbergen was. Like, mm. you know, Van Gisbergen didn't really care about who his teammate was. Um, Will Brown. I don't know. It just seems like everything that's happened so far has been a lot more clean. Oh, I've got to say. But they're a bit more evenly matched. They're a bit more evenly matched, though, than yeah. um, than Shane was with Brock. Yeah, well, Brock definitely didn't make it easy for Will on the Sunday race. And the thing is, they raced cleanly, too, which was fantastic to see. Like, it was close, hard battling. Um, mm. Maybe a little nudge from Will Brown, but uh, nothing severe. Um, also, yeah. did you see... Um, at the start of the Sunday's race, Will Brown and Brody Kostecki going neck and neck with each other. Yeah. That was cool to see. We never got to see that. We haven't seen that yet. And we finally get to see um, them competing in different teams. Um, yeah. It's, it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, just looking at the chat here, uh, Max was having a go. Chaz had bad luck as well. He sure did. And we will get into that very soon. Keith is just annoying. We have to wait. 25 days, yeah, mate, it's ridiculous. Hopefully next year we have a lot more of a dense or closer um, gap between each round. Um, Scotty says... I must admit, though, this is the only one I give leeway for because you're travelling from New Zealand to Perth. Yeah. This is the only only round that I give leeway for the month break. Mm. But the fact that we still have to wait pretty much a month now is bonkers. Um, Scotty yeah, every, says, every uh, three rounds down, who's your pick for the champion? Um, Alex, have you uh, got one at this current point of time? I think, didn't we say, didn't we say Brock or yeah, we said Brown from the very beginning? And, well, it's still only round three, but it's um, looking that way. I think I our- I'm writing them down now. I can't believe Richie's fourth. Yeah, he, he he did very well, um, and well, he actually got into some bad luck, and we'll get into that a little bit later too. But um, I think in our season predictions we did at the beginning of the year, I think we said Brock Feeney would be the champion, um, and I still think that I personally think hmm, it's it's still tricky. Um, Will's definitely driving very very well at the moment. He he has a healthy gap between him and Feeney now. Um, and uh, I, I, you know what? I reckon Will Brown can actually do it. It's going to be a tight fight for the, for the rest of the season. But I yep. am on the Will Brown, Will Brown train at the moment. Uh, Daniel, nice name. How you going, mate? Uh, he said, Will is a very smart driver. He'll race hard and clean all the time. Yep. Yep. Definitely. I agree with that. Great. Mr. Bin Chicken. Um, it's hard not to go with the one of the Red Bull cars. Yeah, exactly, mate. Exactly. Unless Brody might be able to. Take the fight, but he didn't really have a great weekend. But he also does have some catching up to do. He, do, of course, did miss those two rounds. Seth, where did Brody get? Um, we'll talk about him in a moment, but uh, he finished 14th and 12th for the races this weekend. He's last in the championship. And he's last, yeah. But keep in mind, he did miss out the two races, uh, two rounds. Uh, Philip says Tim Slade should should have got a bigger penalty when he... Uh, than what he got when he did that to Cam Waters. Um, yeah, it's a, it's he he did look like he turned what into did... him. Have you seen the um, opening crash? Yeah, but what penalty did he get? I don't know. Did he get a penalty for it? I know he DNF'd well, straight. Well, weren't they just two? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the. I think I'm pretty sure. Cam Wa- yeah. Waters incident. Mm. Um, Scotty says Brody hit everything except the same. <laughs> 
and appeared not to be really interested. Yeah, it's I'm not sure what's going through Brody's mind at the moment, but uh, I'm just glad he's back. Yeah, he didn't he didn't get a penalty. Yeah, no, I thought I thought didn't think I missed something. Um, but at least we clarified that. But uh, speaking of staying away earlier, let's get into second place, which is still Penrite Racing. Um, so it's great to see uh, they are still where they are. Uh, they've got mm-hmm. 1,036 points, so just a mere 400-odd away from Red Bull. Matt Payne finished 13th and 4th, uh, and Richie Stanaway finished 6th and 13th. They had a pretty decent weekend overall in terms of pace. Um, unfortunately, luck didn't go their way on Saturday. Um, Payne spun at Turn 1, same as Brock Feeney, and then he also, there was a pit drama, um, because of course during the safety car they actually double stacked um the Penrite cars, which is the reason why Payne is thirteenth. Um and Stanaway actually Reynolds crashed into him in the pits in the pit lane. Um Oh my god. So, yeah, so uh, it was hectic. Everyone was going in at once, as you know, as they normally do when it's safety car. And Reynolds was told to go, so he did, but literally as he turned in like as Richie turned in, Reynolds started pulling out, and then that kind of caused a kerbuffle. Never a good look. And then Matt Never. Payne's just sitting there waiting, so that obviously delays his run as well. So um, unfortunately, he couldn't recover there. Sunday wasn't too bad. Matt Payne got the pole position, like I said before, um, and then also Richie Stanaway got punted off um, by Brody Kistecki in that final race as well. Um, but overall, besides from that, pretty decent weekend for Penrite. Um, like I said, at least they're in the top three of the teams. And, of course, they're in the pointy end of pit lane once again. Yeah, they haven't moved. In the same spot. Yeah, which is good. Uh, Erebus. Um, yeah, I'm just reading the chat. Uh, Scotty says, did you guys know Richie used to race Speedway till he went car park racing back in the early 2000s? No, I did not. Um, so thanks for that little factoid. And then Seth says Will Brown should have gotten a penalty in the first race uh, from the Will Nut. Yeah, and, yeah, that was surprising. Um, I don't know if you saw that, Alex. Um, uh-huh. When Will Brown went into the pit, uh, one of the one of his Will Nuts decided to go flying uh, back to Australia. In the pit lane. Yeah, he went flying back to Australia, and <laughs> I'm honestly shocked that there's no penalty given to that. Normally, it is. Um, so who knows? Yeah, but uh, it's Red Bull, so they get a little... Good point. <laughs> okay. Bias. You heard it here first. Um, third place, Erebus Motorsport. They've gone back up um, to the pointy end of pit lane once again with 934 points. Jack LeBrock finished fifth and eighth, uh, and Brody Kostecki finished 14th and 12th. Definitely not uh, the weekend the champ wanted to start his season on, but... Uh, then again, like we said before, not sure what his uh, mental state is regarding the team. Because if you don't know, we have made a uh, podcast about the whole Brody situation. So be sure to check that out if you want some information. Um, but it's he could be just there for the sake of seeing out his contract. Um, but I think that's it. Mm, um, but, you know. Well, like, I don't know, like, he's got a proof to him. To other teams that he's still here. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, I don't know what's going to happen with him and possibly a NASCAR gig. I don't think that'll happen now that Peter Addison's kicked him out of his you know, yeah. team. Yeah. yeah it'll be so, interesting. Yeah, who knows? Uh, Jay Thompson, thanks for the follow, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, and thanks for the rose as well. Um, so about Brody, I, I say this a lot. Um, I reckon that, you know, he should, the reason why I think he should do well is because like this year, even despite all the Erebus drama is because, um, I can't multitask. Um, (laughs) yeah, I'm writing too. Bloody hell. Hang on. Good podcast. Silence. Fantastic. Thanks for that, mate. Appreciate it. You're a legend, Jay. Um, by the way, for those on YouTube, by the way, um, if you're on, if you go to TikTok while we're live, if you send a gift or subscribe on there, your name will be featured here. All the subscribers as well, your name will be featured in every podcast video we do, and also in the description as well. So, 
that sounds like something you want to do, you're more than welcome to. Um, yeah, back to the Erebus thing. Um, yeah, with Brody, I, the reason why I think he should do well this season, despite all the drama, is because years to come, right, you look at the results, the historic records and stuff, often you just see the name. You never really look at, you don't really focus on the team that he was part of at the time. You always focus on the driver, if that makes sense, like the name yeah. of the driver. But then again, it is, you know, tricky. Look, the problem is his name is being kind of tampered with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. For sure. In a way. So, yeah. And as much as you'd want to do that and say that, that itself may not be good unless, you know, things improve. Yeah. Um, like I said, hopefully as time go as the year goes on, this stuff starts to tone down a lot. Um, mm. And hopefully we do get some answers eventually. Because um, that will also help stop end things as well. Um, I guess. Yeah, we need that. Um, but who knows when that happens. And don't worry, we'll be covering all of that when it does. So be sure to tune in to Let's Talk Motorsport for that. Um, next up, I'm happy to say this finally. Fourth position is Dick Johnson Racing. They have finally moved up. Um, we we said heading into the week. Heat. Yeah, I said, we said heading into the weekend they needed a good result. And that's exactly what they had. Anton Di Pasquale, two third place finishes. Will Davison, a second place and a nineteenth. We 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 we'll ignore that part. Oh, but, gloss over that part. Um, but the podiums is fantastic, um, and definitely helps them in the long run for sure. And of course, also Di Pasquale actually won the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy as well for the weekend. So that's cool to see. Oh, beautiful. Um, just, I think Heim, Heimgartner just lost it. Um, he came second for that one. But, uh, no, it's great to see DJR up to where they should be. Of course, they've had a rough mm. um, rough start to the Gen 3 era. Um, so hopefully they can, you know, keep the momentum going. But the thing is, um, based off Will Davison's, um, I think he had some troubles. I'm not too sure. But... Um, Hopefully, you know, this isn't just because it was a wet race, a wet weekend sort of thing. Um, no, he did say in qualifying for race eight, the second race, that um, he made a mistake and didn't get into the shootout. And, you know, once you're back there, you're back there. So, yeah. It is hard to – yeah, right. yeah, fair enough. It is hard to um, – to move up sometimes but uh, it's funny actually that reminds me ryan wood <laughs> there was a video of greg murphy and ryan wood talking uh and ryan wood was saying to greg murphy i didn't like did you know if you qualify well and you start up if you start up the front <laughs> <laughs> that was funny i enjoyed that um but that's pretty much it though like it's easier the higher up you are and well actually speak ryan wood good segue to fifth place here yeah, which is with- walking short with Walkinshaw with 899 yeah. points. Uh, they had a good weekend. Wood. Sort of. Who were top 10? Yeah, pretty good. And well, made it into one, the car had a good, one car had a good weekend. Uh, so, okay, let's get that. The other one was, the other one was um, yeah, let's just say the F word was used a few times. Oh, yeah. Uh, all good, win. Thanks for the follow, mate. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so Chaz Moster, 22nd and 7th. And then Ryan Wood, 4th and 10th. Um, now, with Chaz, that is not where he belongs. And with the car pace he had, that's not where he should be. He it was actually... Yeah, he should have technically finished second um, in the first race. He was battling um, Andre all race, that whole race. That was a fantastic battle with him and him neck and neck, only for him to lose his wheel uh, at the end after his second pit stop. Now, apparently, it was due to a cross thread of of the nut, um, which is why the wheel went flying and actually went into a port which is funny. And it really... Yeah, so I, I posted on uh, everyone's everyone's motors... I can't even remember. It used to be called the Erebus um, Racing Group fan page thing on Facebook. I honestly can't remember what it's called because Erebus asked them to actually change the name. Everyone's motorsport page or something. Anyway, if people who are in it, they'll know. Um, and uh, David, I think his name, put up put up there. And I was like, when you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> so there you go. 
Um, but yeah, he he had a horrible weekend. And the worst part about it is when he went back to the pits to get that wheel back on, he as he left the pit lane, guess who was next to him? Heimgartner. Heimgartner, lapping him. How that is just oh, a stabbing that was just God. a knife in the heart, basically. That is just and then Ryan Wood was also catching up to him as well. So that is just torture. And Sunday he had a bad pit stop. And uh, he was fuming. He just did not have a good weekend, um, unfortunately. But Ryan Wood, on the other hand, did. He did very well. Um, yeah, we were saying that what we needed from him was some good finishes. Yeah. And, you know, staying well, out of trouble and it happened twice. And he has moved up in the championship. He's 16th, I believe. And he also, we said this before, he actually holds the race lap record for the supercars around uh, the track at the moment. Yeah. Um, so not bad, not bad indeed. Next up is Team 18. Um, they've moved down the order from third uh, with 877 points. Mark Minnebottom, 11th and 17th, and David Reynolds, 16th and 24th. Now, this is not where they belong. Um, Mark Minnebottom with the 11th, yeah, sort of, like, you know, minimum 11th onwards. But they were bullied pretty much all weekend. Um, like I said, with the whole pit stop thing, um, that was sort of his own fault there, um, that their team's fault. But uh, I think Kostecki, I think uh, the Sunday race, actually, um, he actually spun James Courtney around at turn one, but Reynolds was on the yeah. outside of Kostecki and he got stuck. <laughs> so that's just unlucky. Oh. Um, so that's why he finished 24th, because he was dropping down in the order. Um, yeah, it right. Was, wasn't even his fault. It was just because the, how they did it is he spun James Courtney around, but James Courtney didn't spin fully. He just like stuck like that, like that. Um, so yeah, yeah right. um, bit unlucky there. But uh, they do have the pace, like we saw with uh, in Melbourne. Um, so I'm excited to see how they go on Perth. All Goodwin says they need to change the rules on double stacking. That was ins- yeah, that is it's just it's really messy. Um, and we see it all the time in supercars. Um, need to find True. a way to manage it a bit better. But it's a bit tricky at times too. Um, next up, seventh position uh, with 800 and... What have I written here? I can't even read my own bad writing. <laughs> 859 points is Matt Stone Racing. Uh, Nick Perkett, 19th and a 16th. And Cameron Hill, 20th and 11th. Um, yeah. Honestly, where were they this weekend? Uh, obviously, Cam Hill was just outside per- the 10. But Percat qualified last. But, yeah, like, compare, the compare them to their performance in Melbourne. Like, that's unfortunate to see. It, it? it seems like to me that they'll go around a track that's more fast-paced. Mm. Top was quite a slow track. It was a very slow track. Yeah, um, yeah you're not wrong there. So maybe Perth be better for them because it's quite quick. Um, obviously, it's short. Um, so I think they'll bounce back, but maybe it just wasn't their track. Mm, yeah, we'll see what happens. But obviously, you know, it's the first time everyone was there. Hopefully, yeah. this isn't. Hopefully, this is the last of the bad weekends. Mm, um, speaking of a bad weekend, eighth position. I cannot catch a break. <sighs> Tickford Racing with eight hundred and fifty-four points. Cam Waters, 22nd and a 9th, with Thomas Randall, 12th and 15th. They have not had the year, they have not had the start that they've hoped for. Um, obviously, we know how good they are, but they just haven't done, they haven't had luck. Like, obviously, Cam Waters, he got that pole position on the Saturday, um, only to, you know, have his race ruined by the Tim Slade incident. And he actually made a comment about... Um, he said effing standing starts. He hates standing starts when it's raining. He, he thinks the race should start under the safety car. But personally, I'm against that. I, I rather prefer the standing starts. Um, to be fair, there's nothing wrong with the standing starts. It's just he got just collected by Tim Slade. Yeah. Yeah. Like his start was fine. It's just <laughs> a racing incident. You know, shit happens. And um, yeah. he got away with it anyway. He um, lost his... Um, What's it called? Um, bit of the side, but oh yeah, 
Tim Slade, you know, obviously DNF after that. But it was crazy. That was crazy. Um, but yeah, he can't catch a break, break at the moment. Thomas Randall, I'm not too sure what happened to him. He's sort of mid pack this weekend, um, unfortunately. Um, so they're hope, obviously hoping for a better round in uh, Perth. So we'll mm-hmm. see what happens. Uh, having a quick look at the chat here. Uh, Melbourne was good to be here there. Yeah, I, I bet. Um, it was fantastic to watch it on the TV. Uh, obviously, it would be better being at the track. Flack, the rain is the best weather to race. Plus, uh, there were so many... Su- su- you mean safety cars? Because you said so, ma- so many supercars. And I'm like, of course there is, because it's supercars. But uh, I assume you meant safety cars. Because, yeah, rain can create carnage sometimes. And Keith says Thomas had issues with the car since Melbourne. Okay. Yeah, no, he didn't have a good run in Melbourne either, unfortunately. Um, and no, we... only the last race was good for him. Mm. Um, but, yeah, uh, here is a team I'm happy to say they did really well. Most, well half of them did. Um, the RJ Batteries Middies car team, which uh, got 808 points uh, with Andre getting a win on home soil. And uh, with Bryce Forward in a sixth, and then on Sunday, oh, sorry, DNF, and then on Sunday, Andre got sixth, and uh, Bryce got 18th. Um, so, yeah, fantastic. I'm so happy about Andre. And you, we said it. You said a Kiwi would win. You just didn't say the I right one. I got one prediction, right? Yeah, I did say a Kiwi <laughs> would win. But, but that counts. Um, yeah, so pat still on the, counts. Pat on the back for you. But... Uh, Yes. Now I, I'm so happy. I'm so glad he won. It's also BJR's first win since Sydney 2020, when Nick Perkett won. Um, yeah, back wow. back when he had the Dunlop car. For, I remember from memory because we had our baby shower literally the day uh, day before it, or the day of it. So um, I think the day before. I can't remember. It was so that long ago, and I remember Nick Perkett was driving that car. So that was yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, so, and Andre's second wind as oh, well. Oh, yeah, the, the Dunlop car. Yeah, it's when they came back from COVID. Um, yeah. So that was good to see. So, yeah, no, they drove, he drove very, very well. Like, it wasn't even luck or anything. It was pure pace. Um, and it was fantastic yeah. to see. And even, you know, Sunday was a good race for him too. Um, he climbed his way up to sixth. He didn't, you know, he wasn't as good as Saturday, but he still did rather well. Bryce Forward, on the other hand, however, he actually got spun out by Jack LeBrock in race one, and unfortunately someone, I think, bumped into him, I think, and then he had a issue with the car after that and couldn't, couldn't get it going again. Uh, I'm not too sure what happened to him Sunday, though, um, from memory. But, yeah, I'm just happy that Andre won, <laughs> personally. Mm. Next up is, in 10th position, uh, Premier right, Higher Racing with 788 points. Um, James Golding finished seventh and fifth, while uh, Tim Slade got a DNF in twenty first, uh, which is a real shame for Tim, Tim Slade. Slade. But, hmm? He was top ten at the start of that race. He was so in the shootout. He, I'm not too. I, I can't remember. Um, he was yeah. in the shootout though. Um, yeah, that's right. But I reckon James Golding was the dark horse of the weekend. He was the silent um, successor. Where did he finish in the? Uh... Steve, uh, the Richards trophy, because he would have been up there. He would be up there. I'm not too sure. I haven't um, got the standings for it, because I'm not sure if Supercars actually put it up or not. There wasn't a lot of talk of the Jason Richards trophy, to be honest, unfortunately, um, throughout the weekend. It wasn't as hyped up as it should be. Of course, there were a couple things, but... um, Yeah, no, they were the silent achievers, I reckon. Well, at least James Golding was. And uh, are you searching it now? You got it, have you? Yeah, he came fourth. So and there you go. Supercars do post, by the way. Did they? Okay, never mind. Sorry, Supercars, yeah. you win this time around. You do have many issues yeah. with your website, though, so do fix it. <laughs> so that's yeah, the point. Yeah, it was De Pasquale, Heimgarner, Brown, Golding, LeBrock, top five. Yeah, right. Well, there you go. Not bad. I obviously didn't pay attention. I was too busy making that report. But you were too busy in Sydney, so there you go. That's the shoes on the other foot. Yeah. But um, (laughs) next up. Tim Slate came last. We don't talk about that. (laughs) Next up is 11th place uh, with the second half of the BGR crew, the STT 
Logistics and Pete, technically Pizza Hut car, which is the Wendy's this time around, with 599 points. Jackson Evans, he did really well to finish 10th in Saturday and 14th mm. on Sunday. M- Mackie Jones, 18th and 20th. Yeah, I was impressed with Jackson. Um, obviously, we know he he's, he's a good driver. Obviously, he's not the yeah. great car. Um, but I'm just happy to see him in the top 10. Rookies did well this time around. Um, even Aaron Love, like in a minute, he got he got fifteenth in the first race, um, which I th- yeah it wasn't bad, was it? No, so he did. He did they rookies did well. Flack, um, what team do you go for, Alex? Have you uh, oh, got a one team? Uh, I haven't got one team, so I'm gonna have to work out one team. <laughs> nope. No, you don't. Um. Truth is, I can't work out one team, so I'm going to say my top three. <laughs> Look, when when Scott McLaughlin left, I bought a Chaz Monster T-shirt. Does that count? Yeah, so walking short then. You support. So your sure. favorite? Okay, let's. Your favorite is Kostecki. Ah, oh, fucking, not Kostecki. What? No. <laughs> Monster. Um. So. Yes. Um. They they go. I own uh, a T-shirt of walking short. Well, so that's the okay. Term. Walking short then. Yeah. Well, my top three. Um, probably... You can never have one, can I can't you? have three. I can't have one. Look, I can name all of them if I want. <laughs> Every time I'm yeah. on a live, right? Your favourite's Jack Smith. Yep, there you go. He's the GOAT, obviously. There's no question about it. Don't mess with my GOAT. Jack Smith is a legend, mate. <laughs> um... <laughs> Now we just show sure. a, now we just show a flashback of just um <laughs> that reel that we made yeah, ages ago. Smith. Yeah. <laughs> oh expect a it's reel the in the coming days with that. Um yeah. no, I I have <laughs> to say my top three is Red Bull, Walking Shaw, and Team 18. Um But here this is when Red I go, Bull. Yeah, I go for Bro- Brock and um Wheel. Okay. <laughs> Be different. Change it up. So this is the last podcast we're ever going to do. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did change it up. I added Walking Shore and Team 18. To be number one with Red Bull. Fine, Walking Shore. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull. No, I'm kidding. Um, no one can go for Red Bull. It's too boring. <laughs> no, I, I. Okay, if I have to pick one, it's going to have to be Walking Shore. I have to say. Um, Brad Jones. Well, I even I do don't do that. I do go for them too. <laughs> BRT. That's what I mean. I might as well just name the whole whole list here. Um, yeah. But speaking of the list, let's go on to who's last last place at the moment. Blanchard Racing uh, with five hundred and seventy points, with James Courtney seventeenth and twenty second, mm. and Aaron Love fifteenth and twenty third. Um. Saturday race is a bit where we expect them to be. Obviously, you know, a bit higher. We we expect them to be a bit higher, but compared yeah. to their results so far. Sunday, however, like I said, James Courtney um, got spun out by Kostecki, um, who got a penalty, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Um, so, yeah, obviously brought back all the way down to the bottom. And once you're down the bottom, it's kind of tricky to get back up the top unless your name's Max Verstappen. Um, but there you go. But that is the team standings and the race review for, uh, Torpo, Topor. I don't even know how to properly say it. Um, but let's have a quick look at the driver's standings, uh, after round three. So Will Brown has a comfortable gap between Brock Feeney. He's got 809 points. Chaz Mostert is third. Richie Stanaway is fourth position, like you said earlier. Uh, Matt Payne is fifth as well. Only four points away from Stanaway. Perkat is 6th, LeBrock 7th, Heimgartner is 8th, Davison and Golding, that's your 10. Then we've got David Reynolds and Anton Di Pasquale. Thomas Randall is the leading Tickford at the moment in 13th, with Mark Winterbottom in 14th. Cameron Waters is 15th, not where he belongs, obviously. Um, Hopefully he moves up later on. 16th is Cam Hill, 17th Courtney. Uh, And then we've got Evans. Ryan Wood has moved up to 19th after being last last time out. Uh, and then we got Bryce Forward. Tim Slade is oh sorry, Ryan is tying with Bryce Forward at the moment uh, with three sixteen points, and Tim Slade is also tying with Todd Hazelwood, who's still twenty second place um, despite not racing. Yeah. And then we've got 
Macaulay Jones in 23rd, Aaron Love 24th, and last but not least, Brody Kostecki with only 135 points. Now, that's not going to stay that, that way for the rest of the season. Obviously, he will move up the field, but of course, he did miss out the yeah. first two rounds. Now, Alex, who was your driver of the weekend? Well, who do you reckon, who do you reckon would be? Deep Squally. Yeah, well, he, he did do quite well. Um, well, considering they were nowhere mm. and then gets two thirds. That is true. Um, yeah, him or Golding or Heimgardner were really, really good outstanding. Uh, or the standouts, I should say. Yeah, I've, I've written down Andre for me personally. Um, cause considering how the year has gone for him and the team so far, um, it's definitely a fantastic result to get a win, but he's also in the top 10 for majority of the weekend, which is great to see. Um, but yeah, that win just, it was just, to win on home soil. It was just very special. Um, and he did 100%. it very well too. Yep. So that's Remember how we made predictions at the start of the year and we said, which driver who hasn't won? Yep. And then I said Heimgardner, even though I forgot you won a race. Yeah. Does that still count? Yeah, that technically <laughs> counts, but it doesn't count as the oh. prediction itself. It, predict- it counts as a race winner. Yeah. There you go. So technically, yeah. But speaking of predictions, have a quick look at uh, how we went with our predictions for the what we made on the preview. We didn't do too well. Um, Alex, you said Kostecki would get a podium. No, I said top five. We said this before. <laughs> I watched back the video, top podium or a top five. Still, either way. Eh. Yeah, still didn't work. <laughs> and yeah, I, no. I said at least a top ten. Also, eh. uh, a <laughs> here we win. You got that one, so congratulations. You just got the driver wrong. You said Matt Payne or Richie Stanaway. You were like, it's either going to be Richie Stanaway or Matt Payne. For counts. <laughs> um, yeah, technically you're right. Thanks, though. Andre. Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, I said um, Payne would get a podium. Eh, that didn't happen, unfortunately. He just missed out on the su- on the Sunday race. Red Bull, I mm. said they were hard to beat. Not on Saturday, but yes, on Sunday. Yep. Uh, and cause, like, and Wood would get a res- good result, and he did. So Very good. There we go. How good. Not so bad. that is it for our... Um, Topor preview, uh, of course, next time out is the Bosch Powers Tools Perth Super Sprint, which is 17th to the 19th of May. Bit of a wait. Um, but it's the uh, same weekend as the R Racing 24 hour Nurburgring. Is it? It's also the same weekend as the round two for Pedal Pre as well, which I will be commentating. Um, so if you do go so to. Not much content for Super <laughs> No, we're not going to. I don't know if we'll be able to watch it. Um, no, I'll be able to watch it. <laughs> no, so. For uh, those in SA, uh, yeah, here's the review of the re- here's the review of the highlights. <laughs> uh, highlights ten out of ten. Um, yeah, so if you are in South Australia and uh, or if you're planning to around that time, be sure to go to Tail and Band, the Ben Motorsport Park, Shell V Power Motorsport Park for for round two of the Uni SA Pedal Pre series. Um, I'll be there on track co- um, commentating. Um, so I'm excited for that. So if you do see my face, be sure to say hi. Run away. And run away. <laughs> or that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is Alex's yeah. last podcast, everyone. I do <laughs> just want to thank him for being part of it. No, I'm kidding. You're not going anywhere. Um, so, yeah, overall, Alex, um, from based off what you could have watched, uh, what do you think of the weekend yeah. overall? It was good. It was something different. I feel like the track is very different to – any other the supercars go to in terms of being just a you know, tight, twisty, um, few straights. I reckon that last corner is really cool, like the chicane into a corner. Mm. That's different. Yeah, that's cool. I don't do that anywhere else. Oh, that actually, speaking of that, I you could watch that the drivers were struggling to make that next corner 100%. Man, yeah, because well, they're we coming saw, from the opposite side of the road. Yeah, well, Ryan Wood he made that mistake in the shootout on Sunday. Where he he ran he ran wide. Yes, yeah, uh, he did. Or, yeah, or run wide. Would you call it running wide or cut the next corner? <laughs> bit, no, running wide. It's a bit tricky. Soul Sniper, here you go, mate. Then screwed up. The next um, also, shout out to Soul Sniper, who also shares the same birthday as me. So we're legends. Uh, what uh, thoughts about the race weekend? Um, I thought it was great. That was in. It but was in last week, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um. 
Me uh, mentally, I'm four years old, so there you go. Yeah. Depends on who you ask. But um, what do you think of the racetrack itself? And would you like to see supercars back there again next year at that track? Yeah, look, it, it did seem like they struggled in the corners, which as a you know really heavy car, not surprised about. I think it is not a bad location. It's definitely different. And I think for that reason, you're going to keep it there. Mm. Um, if there's another track that's more, you know, fast or something, perhaps. But I didn't mind it. Do you want to see maybe two rounds at, in New Zealand? Like, Wouldn't maybe be you go to... Wouldn't be opposed to it, but it'd be very expensive. <laughs> it would. Maybe go to hand... Like, maybe... No, like, if they stay there a little bit longer... Like True. back to back rounds. Like we go to Torpo and then we go to Hampton Downs, maybe. Um, I wouldn't islands. mind. Um, yeah, I don't, know. I don't really know many New Zealand tracks from being brutal honest. But I think that if there's a way to make. They used the soft tyres this week, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, they did. I feel like I really. Mm. They did two pit stops, didn't they, everyone? Yeah, yeah. It was two compulsory stops. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's much you can do really to change that. Um, I just want to shout out here. Here for giggles. Is Lance Stroll the worst driver ever? Big yes. Yes. I am 100% saying yes. We are going to do an F1 on podcast. Hate, hate. We're doing an F1 tomorrow. podcast tomorrow, so be sure to tune in for our reaction to that because, man... It was I, a heck of a reaction. But, I'm not uh, going to answer that now because I don't want to get angry. <laughs> ruined my night. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I was having a good night until that name appeared. <laughs> <laughs> not yours here for giggles, Lance's name. But mm. uh, bef let's uh, let's wrap this up. Any final thoughts, Alex, before we close tonight? Um, no, nah, it was a it was a great opening round at Torbor, which is how you pronounce, by the way. Um. <laughs> I'm sure I like how they did the. Uh, <laughs> I like how they did the uh, the driving on the road before the round. That was cool. That was very yeah. cool. We we need to see that That's here cool. more. We get a yeah, few. We, we do get a few like that, but we need James to every round. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. He was having fun, and apparently, fun yeah, fact. You know it. what I learned from that? Jack LeBrock doesn't wear shoes in a race car. Well, he doesn't like wearing Is shoes, and, not racing shoes, but like. Yeah, because Erebus put up a video of them doing that. And he, uh, someone was like, where's your shoes? And he was like, I don't like wearing them in race cars. So that's a fun little wow. fact. So there you go. So maybe he's a barefoot uh, racer on the sim. Who knows? Explain that explains a lot. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, no, nah, it was a great weekend. Great in inaugural round at Top War. And um, yeah, see, see you next year. It should be good for sure. Uh, here for Gil said Anton raced very well. Yeah, he did, mate. He definitely did for sure. Um, yeah, good. so that is our uh, review done and dusted. Um, for those who have joined the live, welcome. Thanks for joining. I do appreciate it. But thanks for all the questions and the follows as well. Uh, means a lot. And also, guys, stick around. Uh, we will be doing a, I'll be, well, at least me, I'll be doing a live a little bit after. But, um, for those who couldn't watch the whole thing, uh, this will be re-uploaded to YouTube tomorrow night at 4 p.m., so be sure to check that out too if you want. Um, of course, this live will be turned into a private video, so, you know. So it looks nice and pretty for tomorrow. Um, but, uh, Very good. Yeah, be sure to check out our socials, which is down below on the screen. It's also in the description below. Check out Slipstream Autosport socials. Uh, also, check out our High Tech Oil Super Series re review or report. Um, that's in the description below, so be sure to check that out if you want. Uh, and, uh, yeah, thanks for joining, everyone. Hope to see you tomorrow night for our Formula 1 Chinese Grand Prix review. Um, and, yeah, bye for now. Yeah. <laughs>